I only use the word diet because that's what we humans like to use as a term to convey what you're eating. What it really is is a lifestyle. So we want to make sure that in the long run, diet is adaptable, adjustable, and personalized. We want to aim for a variety of foods because it's the variety that actually makes the microbiome stronger. Uh, we want fresh food that's organic and non-genetically modified, preferably. Avoiding the processed foods, fast foods, junk foods, even looking at the kind of water that you're drinking. Filtered water actually is an important component of uh, nutrition. And we want to have plenty colorful vegetables and fruits. Don't forget that just because you're thinking and talking about the ketogenic diet, that doesn't mean that vegetables and fruits are out of the equation. They are still a very important part of the equation. So how does the ketogenic diet fit into all this? Well, I want everybody to keep in mind that the ketogenic diet should be considered a therapeutic diet, a type of diet that serves a specific purpose. The ketogenic diet is not a new thing. It's become more sensationalized lately, um, but it's been around uh, for almost 100 years now, right? In uh, 1921, Russell Wilder used it to treat epilepsy. Ketogenic diet is where you're shifting your metabolism from a glycolytic energy production to fatty acid, beta oxidation, and ketone body production. the main cycle that we talk about as far as energy production. So it's all about energy production. We're eating, we're eating different kinds of foods, and the purpose is to create energy, is to create fuel. Glycolysis will convert uh, a sugar to pyruvate and ATP. These are kind of like the main ingredients in order to enter the Krebs cycle. Where you got fatty acids, and the acetyl-CoA uh, converts over here, and then it crosses uh, into the blood-brain barrier and goes into the mitochondria and directly goes into Krebs cycle. So there's a lot less steps involved. What are some examples of keto-friendly food? Focus on the low-carb vegetables, arugula, spinach, your, your leafy greens, your mushrooms, broccoli, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, all of these you can still eat. You want to focus as, uh, fruits is kind of where people get messed up a little bit. Um, so you want to focus on the fruits that are really the lowest um, sugar. Um, so why is dirty keto bad for you? Often includes a lot of highly processed uh, foods and it ends up being just another form of junk food. Um, these can be very uh, high in food additives and toxic chemicals. They often lack essential micronutrients and fiber, and they can impact the gut microbiome negatively. At the end of the day, we always want to come back to understanding what's happening in the microbiome. So the ketogenic diet does change the microbiome. We have plenty of research showing how the microbiome is altered uh, in the setting of a high-fat diet. When you're thinking about the microbiome and you're thinking about how things affect the microbiome, even when you're thinking about genes and how things affect your epigenetic expression of your genes, the, the theme is that the ketogenic diet does impact the microbiome and that certain shifts can occur in a variety of different conditions when the ketogenic diet is present and that these can be therapeutic in those particular people. Remember again, the ketogenic diet is a therapeutic diet. We don't really know if the ketogenic diet is good for 80 years, you know. There, there are people that say they've been in, in a ketogenic diet for many years and they're doing well and that may be good for them, that doesn't mean that it's good for you. Its effects may be modulated by changes in the microbiome. Um, there is certainly evidence uh, in psychiatric and neurologic conditions. Uh, we definitely need more studies, particularly with humans as opposed to animals, um, uh, and we need better safety and efficacy, long-term use, uh, as I mentioned uh, as well. It may not be for everyone, but it may also have a role as well, and just watch out for uh, some of the uh, withdrawal symptoms, the keto flu symptoms, and know that there are things that we can do to try to manage that uh, accordingly.